the doors had bars put on them, the windows all had bars put on them, and there was one entrance door that the security guard sat at 24 hours a day. They had to stay there, sleep there. It stunk, and you know, there were ants crawling around. Did you sleep about an hour, two hours a night? Um, you were in such a mental state that you're very controllable, very suggestible. A look there at the hugely successful new HBO documentary, Going Clear, Scientology and the Prison of Belief. Last night I spoke to Mike Rinder, who was the Church of Scientology spokesman for about two decades. Before, during, and after that interview, the church called several members of our team repeatedly, even though they had reached us and we had spoken with them at length, to berate us for covering this issue. We offered them a chance to come on, which they then declined. Tonight, in part two of my interview, Rinder talks Travolta, suppressive persons, and the techniques the church used to keep its members in line. It sounds like a cult. It is a cult. It is a cult. That's why the film is called Scientology Going Clear, The Prison of Belief, because it is a prison of belief. You believe that your spiritual eternity is at stake that the the well-being of the entire planet of uh, planet earth is at stake that if you are not and and the other thing that scientology is very very adept at is convincing you that if there is a problem if circumstances are bad if you're in a, a bad way it's your fault you have done something that has caused this to happen to you, mm -hmm. so you look inward. But isn't that empowering? I mean, that can be an empowering message of that you, it can. you have control over your own life and destiny. Of course it can. But when it goes too far and it becomes you're locked in, a, in, a, in the hole in a prison, and your reaction to that is to start trying to figure out what did I do wrong that caused me to be here. In prison for a year. You're talking, you're talking about not like a day. It could be in, but let me ask you this. How much of it has to do with that sort of guilt that is imposed upon you and self-imposed and, and reaffirmed by the church? And how much is due to blackmail? Because we learn in the, in the film about how Scientologists go through auditing where they hold the two cans and it's got a string attached and it's, it's sort of like a lie detector. They describe it as, I think, one third of a lie detector exactly. test. And uh, it's supposed to measure, you know, how, how much anxiety you have when asked certain things. And this is supposed to be getting it out of you. It's like going clear. And somebody's writing all <clears throat> this stuff down. So you're sharing your darkest secrets with somebody and they have journals. The, the, the film says they have big journals that are 20 times this thickness that they've got on you and they have it forevermore. Do they use that against you? Can, yes. I mean, a lot of that stuff is being used against me. Uh, it's, uh, I guess it's a matter of how much significance you place on it well, and how I, important it is Let's take somebody like John you. Travolta. Yeah. I mean, if there's a file like that on a star that big, could he ever realistically leave the church? Of course he could. I mean, John Travolta could leave the church if he wanted to. I don't believe that what holds John Travolta in the church is whatever those things are. I mean, Megan, honestly, everything there is to say about John Travolta has been said mm, already. True. The thing that keeps John Travolta in the church is his wife and his family. Because if, because you, if you leave... T tell the audience what happens. If, if you leave Scientology and Scientology believes that you have uh, departed in an unauthorized fashion or you're no longer with the program with them anymore, anybody who wishes to remain in the church must disconnect from you. Right. So Kelly and his daughter, and they would have to disconnect. You, or, are, you are dead to them. You're, you, the Scientology that, basically declares you dead, and everybody has to disassociate from you. That's exactly right, just like what happened to me. The biggest, the biggest decision I had to make when I left was I knew that my wife of 30 years and my two children would disconnect from me, along with my brother and my sister and my mother. When you left, did they disconnect from you? Yes, absolutely. All of them? All of them. And the, the dis disconnection uh, remains in place to this day. It does. But is that the same as being declared a suppressive person? Because Scientologists believe in these so-called <clears throat> SPs. And this is familiar to some of our audience. It hasn't even seen the, the movie yet because 
This clip of Tom Cruise went viral several years ago. It was made for a Scientology uh, presentation, and it got leaked. And he's talking in this clip about, it sounds like he's talking about his kids or somebody asking him about SPs and whether he's ever seen them. Watch. So, have you met an SP? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I thought, oh, what a beautiful thing, because maybe one day it'll be like that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe one day it'll be that. Wow, SPs, like, they'll just read about those in the history books. What, what is that? <laughs> SP is a suppressive person, and in a very simplistic fashion, it's someone that doesn't agree with Scientology. And you and I are SPs. You, you, we are classics. <laughs> I, I mean, you're right up there now, probably not up to the level that I am, but oh. keep working on it, Megan. You, you'll get there. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, it, it's anybody who uh, disagrees with anything that is going on in Scientology. And what do they do to you if they think you're an SP in daily life, well, it, you know, if, if you're identified as one? Um, well, it depends how prominent you are. I mean, there are a lot of SPs now. Like everybody that's commenting who's, who writes on Twitter or does Facebook mm -hmm. posts or well, what numerous about somebody in your life? Do they get completely cut out of your life? What can be done to sort of remove this SP from your life? That's what gets done. Cut them off. Terminate all communication, all relationships with that person so that they are no longer able to affect you mm -hmm. because the belief is that people with that sort of negative energy, if you will, are going to negatively affect now, you. Now, in theory, that makes sense. But this is not what, and that's what the genus of this concept is. Today, it's used as a tool of control, trying to control the flow of information inside what I call is the bubble of Scientology. Right, and, and keep out anything that's bad about the church. Exactly. Are you at all afraid about what might happen to you? Well, you would be a fool not to have some degree of fear when confronted by an organization that has billions of dollars and is fanatical about protecting its turf. And its, its tax-exempt status. Exactly. But on the other hand, I've been going through this for, you know, since I first spoke out in 2009. You know, I've had private investigators follow me to, from following me to the grocery store and taking my kids to school to following me all the way to Australia and waiting for me at the airport in Australia to following me to Ireland to... Wow to having cameras set up at the end of my street in a birdhouse to watch who was coming and going to my house, to buying my garbage, to uh, threatening emails, to all sorts of stuff. But I know that ultimately the, the truth will prevail and that what I am complaining about, which is the abuses in Scientology, will be brought to an end by their exposure. Mike, thank you for being here. Thank you, Megan. The Church of Scientology denies all of it and says that documentary is a huge propaganda piece full of lies.